Let's tackle optimizing your display errors as some of them might be a little bit more tricky than others. Now if we take a look at our index page, we'll note that because we're using dynamic uh, height, what happens is that Export Kit will calculate basically this white space and remove it. It'll actually use the contents of your individual folders when calculating the height. Now we can note that this is apparent if we actually select the layer. You'll see that what it will use is basically content, but section one is included within content itself. Now the end of this section itself, it actually ends here directly where the icon finishes. And if we take a look at the output, you'll see that it cuts off that section directly at the end of the icon. So what we want to do is we want to basically create a little bit of a gap or white space there. And what this will do in HTML is simulate a div with a clear fix of some type. So what we can do is we can begin by simply uh, selecting the folder that it's contained in and we can just draw a shape. Now it's irrelevant the color of the shape that you draw. The only thing we want to make sure, let's just change some of the properties so you can see this really quick. The other thing we want to make sure is where the shape, uh, basically its Y position and its height, because this is where Export Kit will now end the size of that content. Now, we don't want the shape itself to actually render in the output, so all we have to do is add a skip tag to it. So let's go ahead and do that. What will happen now is Export Kit will use the size of this shape when calculating the size of the section, but it will not output the actual element itself. So what this will do is simulate a clear fix in HTML. So basically the content will end here rather than where the icon ends. Now if we go ahead and we look at the About Us page, you'll see that with our actual header, and if we take a look at the output now, you'll see it didn't render exactly the way that we wanted it. Now keep in mind that we're using CSS3 effects. Now CSX CSS promotes that it has Photoshop-like effects, not Photoshop effects. So you have to bear that in mind. There's going to be some push and pull and some give and take. There are a few things that you can do. You can play with the options a little bit. So for instance, if you were to play with reverse, that might give you a better idea as to how HTML will actually render the angle. But you might have to play with a few more options itself just to get the best you know, color scheme that you're looking for in your actual effects. Now. If you are adamant that you want this particular design, then what you can do is just basically add an image tag to it. What this will do is render it as an image and that'll ensure that it you know, basically maintains exactly the way that your Photoshop file looks. Now if we go and we look at the contact page, let's just enable that, you'll see again we have white space and here we want this to basically end, you know, let's call it here. So let's go ahead and let's just create another box. Let's say we want it to end here. Uh, let's just realign that a little bit. And let's add skip tag to it once more just to make sure that element doesn't render. Now another thing that you'll see in the output and if we go to the contact page, you'll note that we have our address here, but in our output our address is rendered directly on top of the map and this if you look in our Photoshop file this is actually the container that it's within it's called map now what happens is and oftentimes uh, depending on what type of output you have selected whether you're using relative positions or not you might see the text content directly in the corner now the reason why this happens is because there is no environment that actually supports a layer with a numerical index for the beginning so you can't have a number you know starting with the name of the layer so what we can do is simply just change this to address or add address to it uh, it's irrelevant and what that will do now is actually render the layer in the correct position. So let's go ahead and let's export this. Once the export is complete, we can go to our HTML5 folder to test again. Now you'll see that for our home page, it actually extended based on the design of our PSD. So if we go back and we take a look. So we drew a square, so this is where it actually ended in our design. Let's take a look at About Us. That's complete. Let's take a look at the contact. You'll see again here it actually added the clear that we also assigned in our PSD. 
Now you'll see there is one more visual error. In our contact design, our text is actually, although it's centered, it's aligned a bit more to the right. Now this is because in Photoshop, and it's very difficult uh, for us to work around this, it will always calculate the starting of a text area wherever it actually detects pixels. So although this text margin, uh, if we actually selected it, you'll see that it spans the entire width of the image. What Export Kit and Photoshop will end up doing is actually calculating the X position here. And you can note this using Guide Kit. So let's just take a look at the individual layer you'll see that this is where it thinks that your layer is actually located within this area although it's not so what we can do now and uh, let's just clear some of those guides to fix this uh, the fastest way is basically to change the size of your text box Just try to make sure it matches the actual width of the text itself and then realign. And then let's export this again. Once we re export, we can just take a look at the contact page only. And you'll see that our text is now correctly aligned. 